This video will discuss the pressure composition diagrams of binary mixtures of solutions. So now moving on with the concept of mole fraction, we can define chi i superscript g, which is the mole fraction of component i in the vapor phase, chi i l, which is the mole fraction of component i in the solution or liquid phase, and we have chi i total, which is the mole fraction of I in all phases combined. So in the liquid plus vapor phase, what is the total mole fraction of I? So N sub N tot sub L is equal to the sum over all components of Ni sub L. So the total number of moles in the liquid is equal to this, the sum over all components of however many moles of liquid there are total number of moles in the gas phase, in the vapor phase, is equal to a sum over all the components of the number of moles of each component in the vapor phase. Okay, both make sense so far. The total number of moles is the sum of the number of liquid moles plus the number of gas moles. Okay. The mole fraction of component I in the liquid is equal to the number of moles of I in the liquid divided by the total number of moles in the liquid. Its mole fraction in the gas phase is the number of moles of component I in the gas phase divided by the total number of gas phase moles. I believe that should be G there. Much better. And then the mole fraction of substance I total is equal to the number of moles of it in the liquid plus the number of moles of it in the gas divided by the total number of moles in the system. Okay, similarly, we can find the total number of moles of I by doing a weighted average of its mole fraction in the liquid and gas phase, taking into account the number of total moles in the liquid and gas phase. So chi I total equals mole fraction in liquid times number of moles in liquid, plus the mole fraction in the gas times the number of moles of gas, divided by the sum of the number of moles of liquid plus the number of moles of gas. So we can now rearrange this equation into the following equation that I have boxed in green. So the total number of moles of liquid in the solution divided by the total number of moles of gas in the vapor is equal to mole fraction of I in the gas minus total mole fraction of I divided by the total mole fraction of I minus the mole fraction of I in the liquid. And this equation is sometimes called the lever rule because if you cross multiply both terms there, it has a similar kind of expression to uh, balancing out the torques from that uh, kind of problem you do in introductory physics where you have to balance, for example, a ruler on a fulcrum with differing masses on the end based off the length of the lever and where it's gonna balance on the fulcrum. It's a similar kind of idea here. You match the number of moles of liquid and gas to, to balance out the difference between these mole fractions in each phase relative to the total mole fraction. Okay, and <clears throat> a few more ideas to discuss here that the mole fraction of I in the gas approaches the total mole fraction of I as the number of moles of liquid goes to zero. So that makes sense because as everything goes to gas, the mole fraction in the gas is just everything. So this part of our weighted average is gonna go away. And the mole fraction in the liquid approaches the total mole fraction as the number of moles of gas goes to zero. Okay, so using a lot of these ideas, putting them together, we have um, from Raoul's law that we discussed in a previous video, the pressure of the system is equal to the pressure of component one plus the pressure of component two, assuming we just have a binary mixture, a system with two components. So Dalton's law of partial pressures, we have that uh, the vapor pressure of one plus the vapor pressure of two. That's going to give us from Raoul's law, P1 star, the vapor pressure of pure liquid one times the mole fraction of component one in the liquid, plus the vapor pressure of pure liquid two, P2 star, times the mole fraction of component two in the liquid. So rearranging this equation for the total pressure, 
as a function of the mole fraction of component one in the liquid, as I have graphed in purple, gives us equation one here. The total pressure equals P2 star minus chi 1L times P2 star minus P1 star. So you get a linear increase going from P2 star to P1 star as the mole fraction of component one in the liquid is varied from zero all the way to one. So our our vapor pressure depends linearly uh, on the on the mole fraction of component one in the, in the liquid between the two. Okay, then from Dalton's law, so we have the, the pressure of component one is equal to the total pressure of the system times its mole fraction in the gas phase, which implies here that the total pressure equals P1 divided by chi 1g. So the total pressure is the vapor pressure of component one divided by the, to the mole fraction of component one in the gas, just dividing both sides by chi 1g there. And that is going to equal, well, P1 from Raoul's law is P1 star times chi 1L. So what we can do is taking all these equations, putting them together and doing the proper substitutions, you can arrive at the following result where I've replaced chi 1G for chi 1L. What you get is that the pressure as a function of the mole fraction of one in the gas is equal to P2 star times one over, see this entire quantity is to the minus one there, P2 star times one over one plus chi 1G over P1 star times P2 star minus P1 star, which is this kind of uh, inverse type of equation that we see here, which is equation two. That's the composition of, that's the vapor pressure versus the mole fraction of the gas. Okay, so what we see here is that if the vapor pressure of component pure liquid one is greater than the vapor pressure of pure component two, then the mole fraction of component one in the gas will be greater than or equal to the mole fraction of component one in the liquid. So what this tells us is that the vapor is going to be enriched with the more volatile component. So if we look at our diagram up here, we see what the external atmospheric pressure is versus the um, vapor pressure and the molar, the mole fraction of the liquid and the vapor at each of those given pressures. So what we have here is a tie line. So at a given value of pressure, we see that we have a certain mole fraction of component one in the liquid and a certain mole fraction of component one in the gas. So when we look down there at this pressure here, which is approaching up to the vapor pressure of pure liquid one, we have that the mole fraction of one in the gas is about 90% and the mole fraction of one in the liquid is about 70%. So it has the higher vapor pressure. So you see that it is the more volatile component and thus you see that it is enriched. It has a higher mole fraction in the gas than it does in the liquid. So for some mixture, we know what the total mole fraction is. That's gonna be some uh, some value that we specify just based off the number of moles of A and B that, or the number of moles of one and two that we have in the solution. So that's not going to change for, for some, uh, this value is not going to change for some closed system. So the only things that can change are the mole fraction in the gas, the mole fraction in the liquid, and the number of moles of liquid and gas. So what this lever rule tells us is based off of our total mole fraction, and based off of uh, whatever pressure we have here, our pressure can give us the relative values of these mole fractions, and that can tell us how many moles of the solution is liquid and how many moles are gas. So above this uh, P1 star here, we have basically entirely liquid due to the constraints of this equation. Below P2 star, we have entirely gas, and then in the middle here, we have uh, liquid and gas, which can coexist during that phase transition as we get the vapor pressures uh, mixing uh, the liquid and the gas when we're in between the vapor pressure of pure liquid two and the vapor pressure of pure liquid one. 
So we'll remind ourselves from uh, phase transitions that the boiling point of a liquid is when the external pressure equals the vapor pressure. So when the vapor pressure gets up to the external pressure, it, would, it becomes a boiling or vaporizing solution. So if this were pure liquid one here, we would have gas at this pressure, as we see in this part of the diagram. Whereas if it were pure two, we wouldn't have liquid yet, as we see in this, or sorry, we wouldn't have gas yet, as we see in this part of the diagram. Whereas at these uh, intermediate mole fractions, we can have a coexistence of liquid and gas, uh, the relative magnitude of liquid and gas, which, which we would get from the lever rule based off the mole fractions of each component in the liquid and in the gas.